working with the Institute for the Psychology of Eating gave me everything in terms of working with clients. Because I had a degree in evolutionary sports nutrition, that was my bachelor's, and so I knew a lot of the nitty gritty stuff of macronutrient balancing and eating for performance. But I think the best thing that IPE has given me is the ability to listen and to really listen to people. And I've been thinking about it a lot for myself personally of really what my gift is. And I feel like my gift is listening because people want to be heard. And it is such an awesome gift to give to someone, even if I'm doing Skype calls or if I'm in person with somebody, if I can give them my undivided attention and really hear what they're saying, then that's healing in itself. And I feel like Mark and Emily were so great about teaching us that, teaching us how to listen really deeply and to give people our undivided attention. Life as an eating psychology coach is forever interesting. So I get a wide range of clients anywhere from 15 year olds to 65 year olds, men and women. And it's just amazing for me to get to see that it doesn't matter what your age or your gender or where you come from, everybody has a relationship with food. And it's been really cool to see that you can have people that are very attached to their story around man, my relationship with food is really troublesome and I'm never gonna get out of this. And then you can have other people that maybe had a past history of an eating disorder or dysfunctional relationship with food and bam, today they're ready for it to be different and we're able to change that rather quickly. And so it's just cool to get to experience different people's resilience around having a dysfunctional relationship with food. When I first started, I was mostly working in the athlete community. So I was definitely pulling a lot of clients from CrossFit gyms, which I was active in. But now it seems to be a wide range of people. I've been coaching for four years now and I've worked with everyone from dancers to triathletes to people who don't exercise at all. And it's just really fun to be able to meet people wherever they are. So regardless of how much exercise somebody does or regardless of where they live in the world, we always have in common the act of eating. <laughs> and so I can always relate with people on that level of, hey, you know, what do you eat? How does it make you feel? Do you notice how it makes you feel? What inspires or drives your food choices? And then how can I be of service to that person? So I can't necessarily say that I specialize in anything because every single person I meet has a story with food. And so every single person I meet is a potential client. I recently had the opportunity to work with a young gal. She was, she is 22 and she's a dancer at a school in New York. So you can imagine that she's under a lot of pressure. Every day she gets up and she pulls on her leotard and goes to stand in front of a mirror all day long and rehearse. And there's such an intense culture around not eating very much or being the thinnest girl in class or being the most uh, tiny person you can possibly be. And so this girl had developed a really intense relationship with food where she was constantly binging and constantly purging. So I had the opportunity to work with her and it was just incredible how in our first session, I was talking to her about compassion. And we started to really work on her showing compassion for her sister, her mom, the other girls in her class. And it immediately took the focus off of her and fixing her problem with food and instead encouraged her to focus on how she was relating to the other people in her life and how she was showing up. So that was step one. That was one of a dozen sessions that I did with her. And in 12 weeks time, she had a completely different relationship with food. And I asked her at the end, like, well, when was the last time you binged? And it hadn't even occurred to her that it had been weeks. <laughs> and it was awesome to see that the work that we did talking about compassion, talking about her vision board, talking about her self-worth, her higher purpose in life, all this different stuff that we worked on that wasn't even really related to the actual food she was eating, radically changed her experience of binging, where by the end of our time together, she didn't know herself as a binge eater. It was as if it wasn't an issue anymore. And to me, that was just such a huge success to see such a young gal 
really latch on to the information that I was giving her about fulfilling a higher purpose, being aware of how her energy impacted other people in her life. And again, it just made it to where her issues with food were non-existent anymore. <laughs> I have the opportunity to work with, like I say, a lot of athletes that are highly motivated. And so maybe they're not bringing a lot of uh, dysfunction or they're not bringing a lot of deep stuff to the table. They literally just want to know, what do I need to eat in order to perform better? And so I have just a wide range of clients that I get to meet wherever they are. So somebody might come to me and say, hey, Heather, I want to gain 10 pounds in order to be in a heavier weight class. And I'll say, great here's what you need to eat, and they do it and we're done. And so there isn't necessarily a lot of digging I have to do. Whereas I could get a client that has been dieting for 35 years and has never seen improvements and really does need to go to the root of what started, started the dieting mentality, uh, why at 65 years old they're still concerned about body image. So it's important for me to remember that not everybody is coming to the table needing to dig up all their old shit. <laughs> Instead, I can have a lot of clients that literally just want some help with nutrition, and it's really easy to do that with them. Just give them great coaching on protein and carbohydrates and good quality fats. Uh, and then for other people who maybe are struggling with more of an intense relationship with food, the best thing that I can do for that person is to have them let that go. And so I won't necessarily spend a lot of time dwelling in their shit or dwelling in their story. I will allow them to tell me their story and then we're done with it and they're done with it. And now they've gotten it off their chest. I want to know what's going to happen for them in the future. And so I'll spend a lot more time helping this person to see a brighter future for themselves rather than diving back into the stuff that they've been literally standing in for 10, 20, 30 years. All of the skills that I learned when I did the IPE coaching from a business perspective were super helpful. I remember one of the workshops we did was talking about what you should be charging. And when I first started, I was charging $50 an hour and felt pretty good about myself at 23 years old, <laughs> making that kind of money. And I don't remember who was teaching that particular workshop, but they said to me, hey, if you're cheaper than everybody else who's in the same business as you, that's gonna reflect, reflect really poorly on your business. So you need to be charging at least what everybody else is and be thinking about upping that over time. And that's been such a cool evolution for me to go from $50 an hour to what I'm charging currently, which is going to increase ideally every three months for me. And working with the Institute really gave me the confidence that I have a skill set that people really need and I can provide a ton of value to my clients. So honestly, I feel like the sky's the limit because the information that I've learned from working with the Institute has given me tools and skills and information and language that is worth millions of dollars to somebody. Because someone could spend a lifetime struggling with their relationship with food, where very quickly we could shine a light on what's going on for them, get them feeling healthier, get them more productive, and radically change their life. <laughs> I'm actually hoping that in a very short period of time here, I'm gonna have a much larger reach and make what I've learned from IPE very approachable for people because I think a lot of folks hear, oh, you're an eating psychology coach or you wanna work on my relationship with food and there's a little bit of pushback. Like, I don't have a problem with food. Why do we need to talk about this? I don't have a relationship with food. And so my goal in the next few years is really to help people get away from that stigma and that negative connotation around eating psychology and instead to just embrace that, wow, how they show up to the table really does impact their metabolism, their calorie burning, their level of satisfaction. So one project that I've worked on is called My Diet is Sexy. And so you can check that out at mydietissexy.com. But it's really pushing people to eat a diet that makes them feel sexy, strong, and satisfied. So I feel like 
one thing that I can do to continue to give my gift is encourage people to use the eating psychology tenets and to do the deep breathing, do the slowing down. But out of that, what they're going to gain is this relationship with food that leaves them feeling sexy, strong, and satisfied. And that's pretty easy for people to wrap their head around because, again, I don't need to sit down with every person on the planet and dig into their gross, dirty, ugly history. Instead, I just want to inspire people to eat really healthy food, get a ton of satisfaction and a ton of pleasure out of it, and then focus on the other things that they're doing in their life, the bigger things, the things that light them up, the things that get them excited.